found that it fits the data well um, in the Florida Keys, but in Belize and Suriname it predicts um, higher sea levels than present in the mid to late Holocene um, than supported by the data. Um, and so we can go a little bit further and start to look at these differences in sea level um, by application of the Skousen process model that I talked about on the previous slide. Um, so these are spatial plots um, shown here going back in 1,500 year time steps uh, where on the top um, you have the height of sea level um, where zero is present and uh, the units here, I'm sorry, are in millimeters. So we can think of this as five, negative five meters, negative 10 meters, negative 15 meters. Um, and this plot here is just showing the number of, um, of index points or data points um, at each region um, during that time period. And then on the bottom, um, we've got the probability of a high stand. So that's the probability of sea level higher than present, um, where blue is 0% probability and one is 100%, or sorry, red is 100%. Um, so 8,000 years before present, we can see that most places in the Caribbean um, had sea level between you know, 7 and, um, and negative 12 meters. Sea level was a bit higher in Suriname and Guyana. And there is no probability of sea levels higher than present um, anywhere in the Caribbean region. Um, moving forward to 7,000 years before present, we can see uh, sea level rising in most of the Caribbean um, to around five meters in most, five to seven meters in most locations. Um, we can start to see at this time uh, sea levels close to present level um, in Suriname and Guyana. And then looking at the probability of sea level higher than present, uh, we see, again, there's no evidence for a high stand in the Caribbean. Um, we keep moving forward in time to 6,500 years before present, 6,000 years before present. And it's about this time that we see a higher probability um, of sea level higher than present um, in this location. And uh, I could probably add a line here so that we see where the zero is better, but um, of a magnitude, of you know around one meter. Going forward in time we see the magnitude of this increases uh, to about 1.5 meters and there's a high probability of sea level higher than present uh, and this continues uh, to 4,000. Um, and so what this suggests is that influence um, of glacioestatic adjustment and subsidence from um, the proglacial forebulge that extends further south into Caribbean, the Caribbean which is um, consistent with some previous modeling studies, um, namely by Glenn Mill and, and Kurt Lambeck um, in this location. Uh, so we can also use um, this Gaussian process model to assess um, rates of change um, for each of these regions. So plotted here is um, a thousand year average rate of change um, going from a little below zero up to 15 millimeters um, per thousand year then going back in time. And so each of these red lines here um, represents the rates of change for each of the sites in the database. And you can see that there's a large variability in these rates in this region. Um, and the one that I want to point out here, um, this bottom rate is Suriname and Guyana. So again, it provides additional evidence of sea levels higher than present. So we have negative rates of sea levels falling to its present day value. So we can then start um, to apply this standardized approach in these advancements in sea level reconstructions um, to global data sets. Um, we can compare these sites because we're using this standardized approach. Um, so this comes from a review paper that I worked on earlier this summer to compile a global um, data set of sea level records of studies using a similar approach. And so I'm going to show you um, a subset of these sea level records from um, Greenland, uh, North and South America down to Antarctica. Uh, where up here in Greenland in A, um, and then um, the Northwest Georgia Strait in Canada and B, Southern Maine, and then in Antarctica, the South Shetland Islands in Antarctica. Uh, these are near field sites, and so the magnitude, um, and they're characterized by falling sea levels um, to present. The magnitude and the um, timing of these changes varies between sites related to local ice sheet histories. Um, but they, they're all characterized by this um, falling sea level to present. Um, then we have our intermediate field sites uh, in New Jersey, Louisiana, Central California, and St. Croix. Um, so these sites are characterized by high rates of relative sea level rise um, in the early Holocene, 
related to um, ice melt contributions, uh, namely from the Laurentide ice sheet. Um, and then this slows at around 6 or 7 Ka, and the subsequent rise to present um, is related to subsidence from the um, well, subsiding proglacial pro forebulge. And then finally, when you get down um, to Suriname and Guiana, and then northeastern Brazil, um, we see far field sea level records, and these sites um, are characterized by high stands or higher sea levels than present around um, five to 7,000 years. And this is related to um, processes such as um, continental levering. So in placing a water load on the broad continental shelf, it induces flexure of the rigid lithosphere and it causes uplift um, of continental areas. Um, and so then as this, as the um, load relaxes and reduces, then you have falling sea levels to present. Um, so then looking at a subset of these samples um, along the western Atlantic coast from New Jersey, St. Croix, uh, and Brazil. So we've applied the Gaussian process model um, to these sites. Um, we can look at um, the rates of change um, that are derived from this model. So here we have going back in time from 0 to 7,000 Ka. Um, and this is an important time period because um, at this time, uh, the Laurentide ice sheet had finished melting. And so any, um, any uh, sources of melt would have to come from either um, Greenland or Antarctica. Um, and these are you know, two important players for future warming scenarios. So we want to understand the sensitivity of these ice sheets um, you know, to past, past warming. Um, and so I just want to bring up the concept of static equilibrium or, or fingerprinting. And so um, these two plots here, they're showing um, it's a ratio of instantaneous relative sea level change um, relative to global mean sea level um, um, in RCP 8.5, so the high emission scenario um, predicted by the I, uh, IPCC. Um, and then the response of the Greenland ice sheet and the western Antarctic ice sheet um, to this increased CO2 and temperature. And so what you can see is that if, uh, for example, here the Greenland ice sheet, if you melt the Greenland ice sheet, um, the sea level signature is actually um, very unique. So if you have a large um, ice mass, it has this gra gravitational attraction um, that it holds. And so as you melt it, this attraction, it reduces. And um, so you actually get a fall in the near field to this ice sheet and then sea level rise distance to it because of this reduced attraction, mostly. And so if the Greenland ice sheet were to melt, um, you would get the greatest rise in relative sea level um, off the coast of South America. And conversely, if you had uh, melting from the Western Antarctic ice sheet, this would be experienced um, greatest across um, the US Atlantic coast. So if we just think back a second um, to this uh, change in rates here, where um, going further south, uh, we have um, a, a decrease um, in the rates uh, rates of change going further south along a latitudinal gradient. Um, this is consistent at around you know, six to 4,000 years before present um, with a Greenland advance and retreat. Um, so just to summarize, um, it's, it's important to use a standardized approach when you're collecting relative sea level data um, so that you compare sites across the globe. Um, I showed an application of this methodology in, in the Caribbean region. Um, and then the application of this hierarchical statistical model um, and its power in assessing um, spatial trends and rates of change in relative sea level. Um, and then finally, so if we can expand these data sets um, with better resolution or better spatial coverage, um, it's a way forward to test hypotheses, hypotheses um, about sources of meltwater uh, through ice sheets, sea level fingerprints. So um, I just want to acknowledge my co-authors uh, on this. Um, my PhD, or sorry, well, my PhD and my postdoc supervisor, Ben Horton, um, Erica Ash, who did all of the modeling for this work, um, and a long list of other collaborators, and then the funding sources for this. So thank you.